Do you all remember when the LG V50 first came out? They also had a dual screen case with it, and I said back then this should be more of a thing. Well, now with their latest announcement at IFA, LG have finally made this a reality. Hey, it's Joshua Figara. What's going on, everybody? And here's a look at the LG G8X ThinQ with its dual screen case. I know, it's a mouthful. LG G8X ThinQ, and then you have the dual screen case or the dual screen cover. But what we're looking at here is also an updated version of the LG G8 with a few enhancements that I actually feel are really awesome. Now, getting some of the specs out of the way, we're going to start off with the Snapdragon 855. Uh, it's not the 855 Plus, but the processor that's in there already should be good enough for a lot of uh, daily tasks and for plenty of heavy gaming. You get 6GB of RAM and 120GB of onboard storage, expandable with a micro SD card slot. It's pretty nice to see expandable storage on a phone that's actually a little bit smaller. Uh, so with the LG G8 coming back and being updated like this, you are getting a smaller form factor that is a bit easier to handle with high-end specs. This particular phone is updated in the sense that the fingerprint reader from the back is now an in-display fingerprint reader, which is pretty great. Another part of just the phone itself that has been enhanced has to do with that front-facing camera. Thank God, LG finally put a more powerful camera on the front of this particular phone. Normally, LG tends to put something with lower megapixels and not a whole lot of thought put into it, but now it's a 32 megapixel camera that uses pixel binning to give you 8 megapixel final shots that should help with low light situations. That also means you can record on the front facing camera in 4K resolution, which is going to be great for any vloggers out there. And finally, that battery is a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, all encased in a body that meets the mil spec standard. I mentioned a second ago about the handling of this phone, and the reason why is because the screen is a 6.4 inch uh, OLED display at full HD plus resolution. I know that's a little bit of a curveball to throw at everybody. Uh, it's not a quad HD display anymore, but one of the reasons kind of for this choice is so that this screen matches the screen that they put on the dual screen case. So let's go ahead and talk about that. The dual screen case, it also comes with a 6.4 inch OLED Full HD Plus display with its own teardrop notch. That way you get two of the exact same screen, kind of like having a multiple monitor setup. It connects to the phone via a USB-C connection, and then after that, there's a little bit of a charging adapter that you have to use in order to charge the phone if you do leave it in the case. There are some enhancements to the case itself. If any of you out there have actually tried out the LG V50's dual screen case, uh, well, there are some improvements here that I think you're really going to like. For one thing, the hinge actually stays where you put it along the full 360 degree axis. You can get it all the way back so you can still use the phone in a regular manner, just having the case folded onto itself. But the best part is that you can angle it exactly where you want it to be and you don't have to rely on one of the three or four configurations like on the original case. And one main enhancement that was made to the dual screen case was a small 2.1 inch screen on the front that shows you notification icons, the time and the date so you actually have a little bit of info on the cover rather than just a small LED light. The dual screen has already proved itself as a great multitasking tool. You can have independent applications on both the left and the right and be able to do two things at once, literally. Like for example, in my case, I love to have YouTube over on the side uh, and then I might read something on Twitter or open up a browser or even just look at my Google feed while that content is playing. And both screens, of course, rotate so you can get a full YouTube clip or you can get a full video uh, in that widescreen aspect and then keep browsing in a rotated manner in the landscape mode on the other screen. But there are some extra functions that were added into the dual screen case this time around. For example, you can use one screen to be your full keyboard when you're typing uh, in a messenger of sorts on the other screen. If you have content on the left side that you want to share with someone that you're messaging on the right side, you can just hit a button on the LG keyboard and it's going to take a screenshot of the left and send it immediately to the person on the right. And then of course, like I keep saying, multitasking is always so good on something like this. Uh, you can even do video calls on one side and continue reading or looking at stuff on the other. But of course, there's a big focus on gaming and entertainment when it comes to the dual screen case. And I actually went through one of these new features myself in another video that you can look forward to if it's not already out, uh, or you can find it in the card above or in the description down below. It's the LG GamePad. Uh, you already saw this on the original dual screen where there were some uh, pre-configured game pads that could be used on one touchscreen and used to control a game that is playing on the other screen. 
This already worked pretty well on the LG V50 because it just tapped into the support that some games already have for physical gamepads. But now for games that are just touchscreen enabled, you can actually map out buttons yourself and have them trigger certain parts of the touchscreen. This is obviously going to be great for a game like PUBG Mobile. This is just a taste of what I was able to do with the LG gamepad using the dual screen case on PUBG Mobile, and I actually walked through the entire setup in that other video, so make sure you go check that out as well. Long story short, I did a really good job in PUBG Mobile because my fingers were not uh, in any danger of pressing anything I didn't want to press, and for enjoyment's sake, my fingers were out of the way of the actual game itself, so those are two big pluses for this configuration. For the creatives out there, the dual screen can actually give you a way to be a better IG boyfriend or girlfriend. So you can fold the case onto itself and use the 32 megapixel front facing camera as a kind of main camera so that with the two screens looking in two different directions, you can see what you're going to be taking a picture of and the person you're taking a picture of can see how they look as well. So they can probably frame their own photos for once. One kind of fun thing you can do with this camera uh, is use the front-facing camera that now can record 4K resolution because it's a 32 megapixel sensor. You can also use the case to get a little bit more distance away from you. So I'm actually using the flap of the case right now. Maybe I can show you right now actually. There you go. <laughs> I'm using the flap of the case right now to get just a little bit more length out of it because the focal length of the front-facing camera is it's decent, but getting just a little bit more always makes a difference. ASMR recording on this phone now makes the mic sensitivity really high, which is probably not ideal for all of the noise we have. But there's Michael Fisher over there trying to record. And here is my ASMR recording of putting the phone into the case. Let's see if it picks up all of the sounds. There you go. That's better. Foldables are perfectly fine and are admittedly very exciting devices, but there's a certain intuitive quality to the dual screen case when you can open it up, have applications pop up automatically, or you could just launch them yourself in a way that feels familiar. You don't have to actually play with grids or change the way that the apps appear on a large screen. And then when you don't even need to use the dual screen case, the phone will just pop out and you can still use it like a regular LG G8, only with the extra enhancements that now make it the G8X. So I want to know what all of you think about this. The LG G8X ThinQ, the phone itself, with that better front-facing camera finally, but also the dual screen case, which has always been exciting, but now is going to be made more available to more people. That's exciting too. So again, to the comment sections down below, let me know what you think about all of this. And then also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining us. I am in Berlin at IFA. It's already been a tiring and very busy time, but we're doing our best to bring you as much content as possible. And also, uh, to just have some fun with all the new things that are being announced here at IFA 2019. With all that said, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching, and until my next video, I would just remind you to enjoy your tea, everybody.